Hi there, and welcome to the Caterpillar Cross Stitch YouTube channel. My name is Ford, aka Son of a Stitch. With me, as always, is my supervisor, Nugget the Parakeet, and this week we're going to be talking about specialized language regarding cross stitch. In other words, we're going to cover the whole cross stitching lexicon. So buckle up, because there's a lot to cover today. Here at Caterpillar Cross Stitch, we are all about cross stitch, and we upload videos every week with tons of useful information to help you get the most out of the hobby. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon to get a notification every time we drop some new stitchy knowledge. As with any subculture, cross stitching has its own language. We have a lot of jargon and slang that we use, and it can sometimes be intimidating and confusing to newcomers. So I'm going to cover as many of those terms as I can today, and I'll give you external references so that you can learn more about them. Don't forget to join our VIP Stitch Club. You'll get 10% off your first order, a free ebook containing eight digital cross stitch patterns, and a download with our top 10 cross stitching tips. So click the link in the description down there to get all those great perks. The first category of specialized terminology that we're going to talk about is materials. So let's start with the basics. This is embroidery floss. It's characterized by the fact that it can be divided into six individual strands. It usually comes in a skein. Skein is 8 meters or 25 feet or 4.5 Tom Cruise's long. Embroidery floss does also come in cones. This is a 100 gram cone of DMC floss. It also comes in 500 gram cones, which are commonly referred to as the cone of doom. So that's what people are talking about if you see one of those mentioned in an online community. Frequently you'll find a kind of thread near the embroidery floss in the craft store called pearl. It comes in little balls instead of in little skeins. It can't be divided up into individual strands. It's not really intended for cross stitching, so I don't recommend getting it, even if they're out of the color of floss that you're looking for, because it won't quite work. I guess Nugget doesn't have any, want to have anything to do with today's video. It's kind of hard to work with embroidery floss off of the skein, so people frequently put them on bobbins like these. And the process of winding it off of the skein and onto the bobbin is sometimes called bobbinating. Ada is the most commonly used type of cross-stitching fabric. It's special in that it's woven from little ribbons instead of individual strands, so that it makes it a lot easier to see and count the grid within the fabric. But we always cross-stitch on a material called even weave. Even weave is characterized by the fact that it has the same number of threads per inch in its vertical or warp count as it does in its weft count. So those are woven together, but you have the same number of threads up and side to side so that when you stitch on it, it gets you a nice square cross-stitch. There's also a lot of even weave that's made out of linen. Linen is the type of fiber that it's made from. Linen is different in that it's not always the same size thread, so you might wind up with a little bit of inconsistency as far as your count, and you'll occasionally get little slubs, little chunks of fiber that are stuck to the strand. These all add to the inconsistency and the rustic look of those pieces. Uh, you just have to give up a little bit of perfectionism and control if you're going to use linen. Sometimes people talk about the devil's pubes, which is a, an affectionate way to refer to the very difficult to use metallic and shiny embroidery flosses that are sometimes available or called for in a pattern. There is a slightly less shiny, but also much easier to use kind of shiny embroidery floss from DMC called Etoile. It just has a little bit of sparkle built into it. And then there is Ada or even wee fabric that has a little bit of iridescent sparkle built into it. This is usually referred to as opal. Usually the embroidery floss is all one color, but you will find some that sometimes vary in tone that is lighter or darker, but within the same color. So if it's a light yellow fading into a dark yellow, they'll be referred to as a variegated thread. You'll also see threads that fade from one color into the next. So purple into yellow into green, that will be referred to as a variations or color variations thread. And you'll see those from a lot of different manufacturers. And when talking about fabric, we'll refer to its count. That is its density of threads per inch. So 14 count fabric will have 14 threads per inch, and if you stitch it in the typical way, you'll wind up with 14 stitches per inch. So that will determine how big your project will end up based on how many stitches wide the project is. And finally, there's a special stitching material called waste canvas. You'll tape or glue or baste stitch this onto a project that is not even weave, so a jean jacket or a t-shirt that'll allow you to create cross stitches, and then when you're done, you get it a little bit wet, that loosens up the starches in the waste canvas, and you can pull out all the threads, just leaving your cross stitching behind. The next category of cross stitch terminology we're going to talk about has to do with methods. So we're going to talk about the Danish method. The Danish method is where you create 
one half of all of your cross stitches in a row or in a group in an area, and then you come back the other way and cross them all. This is a little more efficient with the floss, and a lot of people prefer to do it this way. But there is also the English method, where you cross each X one at a time as you go along. Uh, this can be especially good if you have stitches that are far apart from one another, or I highly recommend doing it if you're using those variegated or color variation threads that I talked about earlier. Gridding is where before you start stitching, you mark out the square, usually 10 by 10 grid from the pattern onto the fabric so that you don't have to keep counting from parts you've already stitched in order to complete stitching. It takes some extra time, but it allows for greater precision and reduces the likelihood of making mistakes. When doing large full coverage pieces, a lot of people like to park their threads, so use the parking method. That's where instead of finishing off a thread once they're done in a particular area, they will save that thread pull it to the side, and then when they move over to the next section of their grid on their pattern, they'll bring it back and do all of those ones in a particular color. The alternative to this is a method called cross country, where you take one particular color and you just fill in all the instances of that color that you can find in the pattern, instead of working in a square grid area of that pattern. Another technique a lot of people use is called railroading. This is pretty much just bringing your thread down between your two strands of embroidery floss to help make sure that they don't tangle as much and that they lay flat. Now most people stitch in an embroidery hoop, and there are two ways of doing that. One is to stitch on the top side of it like this, and that's the most common. This is known as stitching on the drum. And some people will stitch on the inside like this. This is known as stitching in the well. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. <laughs> Nugget really likes embroidery hoops. But some people don't stitch with a hoop at all. They hold the fabric directly in their hands. This is known as stitching in hand or stitching hands only. One of the advantages of stitching in hand is that you can use the sewing method, where instead of bringing your needle down all the way through the fabric and then bringing it back up, you just dip the tip of the needle down into the fabric, scoop up one stitch worth of fabric, and then pull it all the way through. This can be a little bit faster, but also a little harder to keep your stitches nice and consistent. Confetti is when a particular pattern has a lot of little loose, isolated stitches of one particular color. Sometimes this can be a sign of a poorly designed pattern, so it is something to keep an eye out for because it makes stitching much harder. And finally, you'll hear people talk about frogging. Frogging is one that confuses a lot of people when they're new to the community, and it basically is just removing stitches that you've already done. There are two leading theories as to why we call it this, but I think that both are really true to a certain extent. One is that you got to rip it, rip it, rip it out. It kind of sounds like ribbit. And the other is that when you are pulling stitches out of the fabric and undoing your stitching, it makes kind of a creaking, croaking noise that sounds a little bit like a tiny frog. So let's talk about some tools. I already mentioned a hoop. Hoops come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes and materials, so there can be a lot of different things that might be referred to as a hoop. But there is also a thing called a Q-snap. These are made out of PVC, they're usually square, and they have a little bracket that snaps over the fabric to help hold it tight. And they're a little thicker, so they can be a little easier to hold on to, especially if you have any arthritis or anything in your hands. There are a couple of tools that are really only used by advanced stitchers who really care about the consistency of their stitching. One is called a laying tool. It's mostly just a little probe that you can use to make sure that the two strands of your stitching lay parallel and flat to one another. Helps add that tiny bit of consistency that can be really nice if you're really, really concerned about that. And the other is called a tail catcher. This is basically just a little piece of wire with a sturdy handle on it that you can slip under the stitches on your back and stick the tail of your thread through when you're done stitching to pull it back through. And you'll usually hear people that you say that you should cross-stitch with a tapestry needle. But what is a tapestry needle? A tapestry needle is really just a blunt needle with a large eye that's intended for doing things like cross-stitching. The last category of terms that I'm going to talk about are community-related terms. So this is a good time to, for me to recommend to you the Caterpillar Cross-Stitch community. This is around the Caterpillar Cross-Stitch Instagram and Facebook group. Uh, there's tons of great people in there with support and ideas and troubleshooting and... Um, it's just a really great place to be around other stitchers who know what you're talking about. Now, as a community, we really love our initialisms, and there are a lot of them that we use, so I'm going to run through a bunch of those real quick. There's LNS, which is a local needle workshop. There's an RAK, which is a random act of kindness, which is usually just someone will give something away to a random person within an online community. There's HAED, that's a particular designer called Heaven and Earth Designs. They make really big projects. There's BAP, which is a big-ass project. There's WIP, which is a work in progress, and a lot of online groups have a WIP Wednesday where they share projects that everybody's working on. Once you're done with it, it's no longer a WIP, it's an FO, a finished object. But if you manage to get that thing mounted, put into a frame, and ready for display, that is an FFO, a fully finished object. 
Or if it never graduates from being a whip and you're never going to finish it, then it's a UFO, an unfinished object. <laughs> Sometimes you'll hear people talk about de-stashing. This is where they have something that they don't think they're ever going to use, and they'll either sell it or give it away in order to reduce the amount of craft storage that they have. Uh, the reason somebody might want to de-stash is because they are sable, S-A-B-L-E, which is shorthand for stash acquired beyond life expectancy. And the final one I want to talk about is something that often gets mistaken for an acronym, but is actually just an old English word. It's ORT. It's just an old English word for scrap, but people think that it must be an acronym. So they'll sometimes say it stands for old random threads or old ratty threads, but it's just an old English word that doesn't get used much anymore. What do you think, Nugget? Did we miss anything? So unless you have something that I missed that you think I should have covered, hit it in the comments down below. For Caterpillar Cross Stitch, my name is Ford, and I'll see you next time.